Okay, so good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, it's just hit 10 o'clock here in the UK, so I'm going to get started. Um, we're a fairly small group today, so um, hopefully that will give us plenty of time to answer questions and have chats along the way. Um, we might have a couple more people join, um, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. Oops, skim through a little bit. Um, so today we're going to have a look at um, the aphasia page set in Stack Core first. Um, my name is Alice Langley. Um, I'm an account manager here based in the UK. Um, and as part of my role, I support sales uh, within my region. Um, uh, but also I have clinical background as a speech and language therapist. Um, so I also provide quite a lot of support for um, training within the UK. Um, so I, I go out and meet different teams and um, deliver trainings in different settings, um, normally face to face. So starting to, to get used to doing it via Zoom now, but um, it's certainly not the norm for me uh, just yet. Um, for those of you that um, may be uh, still getting used to Zoom, um, just a couple of things to point out. Um, on your toolbar, uh, you'll have a little chat button. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to ask um, if you've got any questions um, to put them into the chat uh, window as I'm chatting. Um, we do have my colleague Cameron Smith, who's with us today as well. So what he's going to do is he's going to keep an eye on that chat. Um, and he will answer any questions as they come in. Um, and then I will also be taking some fairly regular pauses so that I can answer either questions from the chat window or if you'd like to um, unmute um, your microphone um, and go ahead and ask some questions there. Okay, so um, just for, for those of you that are maybe um, interested to get um, to know a little bit more about Snapcore first um, and not just the aphasia page set, um, if you haven't already, uh, we have a bunch of modules that you can sign up to. Um, we are running um, a couple this week, so we've got um, do more with Snapcore first and building skills. Um, if you have missed any of the previous modules and you'd like to um, watch those, just Drop me an email um, and I'll, uh, you'll get my email address um, after today and I'll send you, um, we've recorded some of the sessions um, and we've got them on our YouTube channel. Um, so I'm also recording today's session. So what I'll be doing after today is I'll be sending you a copy of my slides um, and also a link to the recording of this session so that you can watch it back um, or you may want to, to share it with colleagues. Um, if after today's session, it's given in. There we go. If after today's session you would like to know a little bit more, um, whether it's more about Snap Call First, so you've got some more specific questions to ask about, excuse me, other software or maybe devices that you want to know a little bit about, um, we'd really encourage you to account um, to contact your local account manager. Um, so here in the UK, um, there are five of us that, that cover the whole of the UK. Um, and you can find out who your local account manager is by clicking on the link there. And as I say, I'll be sending out the slide. Or if you've got any general questions, you can contact our um, UK office. Um, if you're outside of the UK, I know that we've got a couple of people outside the UK today. Um, this link down here to the bottom left will um, also give you a link to finding out who your uh, local contact is. Um, and they'll be able to provide um, either some more information um, or they might be able to, to set you up for another training session as well. So today we're going to be talking specifically about the aphasia page set. Um, I'm going to kind of go through each of the tools and a bit of the information fairly quickly. The idea of today's session is to just give you a bit of an overview. So if you do want to know more about it or you want some, a more in-depth demo, then please feel free to get in touch with us and we'll set you up with um, a, an appointment for that. Um, so today really is just about giving you an introduction to the page set and then um, kind of uh, signposting and some more specific resources that you can go on and find some more out. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to um, look at building something specific for our clients with, with aphasia. We know that they have fairly specific needs that could be met um, by using um, different tools. So we wanted um, to, to, to look at using some of the tools that we already had within Snapcore first, but also adding some other tools. 
um, including things like visual scenes and a whiteboard, um, so that we could really support that multimodal communication that we know is so important to this client group. So I'm just going to take you through um, each of the tools that we've got available in there, and I'm going to go ahead and open up Snap and just show you a bit of a live demo. Um, so first thing, um, just to note, as for, for those of you that have, have used Snap Call first before, the, the, the layout of the system itself is very similar. Obviously, we've, we've used slightly different colouring, but you'll notice that you've got the top bar with the tools at the top. You've got the message bar and window there. And then on the left hand side, you've got your toolbar. So this is where you can select all the different tools that are available. And this is where you're going to see the differences between this page set and the core first page set. So the first thing you're going to come across is, is uh, word lists. Um, so the idea with this is it's going to help support our AEC users to find and use um, fringe vocabulary. Um, and we know that this could be quite a difficult um, uh, kind of area for a lot of our um, uh, clients that have got aphasia or had, had a stroke. Um, so we've categorised um, our word list and we've put them um, into kind of more frequently used order. So you want to notice things like people and names and places which tends to be something that our clients um, kind of struggle with quite a lot and um, come up at the top. Um, and then of course, we've put lots of suggested stuff in there, but the idea is that you would personalize as you go along. Um, so if there's things that, that somebody finds more difficult, you might want to put um, a list in there as well. Uh, similarly to Snap Call First, we've got our quick fires in there. So, you know, we know that quick fires are going to be that kind of um, formulaic chunks of language that really help us sort of engage in those social interactions. So it's that kind of, you know, hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Uh, you know, I need uh, to go to the toilet. I'm hungry. All those kind of bits of, of language that help us engage really quickly. Um, and so just to note within this page, uh, page set specifically, all the messages within quickfires are adult orientated and specific to people with aphasia. So we've really thought about this client group and what kind of language they use um, and what they need um, kind of more specifically. We do have um, uh, a topic or a, a, a bar in there that's uh, in quickfires that is my aphasia. Um, what this will allow is it will allow our users to advocate for themselves. So it talks a little bit about their condition, how they communicate. So it really helps them in that in that moment, and especially I suppose with with communicating with new people, uh, to explain a little bit about about their aphasia and how um, they can best be supported. Um, each page within Quickfires um, only has one page of vocabulary on there. So I'll show you when we dig in, but there's, it basically means that we're, we're trying to eliminate that need for scrolling through lots of um, kind of phrases to find what you need. So we're really trying to kind of limit it to what's um, kind of most useful at that point. Um, and then what we've also done is that each folder within Quickfires is color coded so that the learner will, will be able to know which folder they're in. And again, when I kind of go into the demo, that'll make a little bit more sense um, at that point. Um, just checking, we don't have any messages in the chat window, do we can? Is there anybody else that wants to ask anything at this point? There's no questions in the chat window. Okay, cool. All right, I'll carry on. So another tool that we've got available that is kind of new to Snap Call first is um, this whiteboard. So we know that people with aphasia really benefit from uh, written keywords, drawings, use of photos to support both their understanding um, of communication, but also uh, to help them with communicating different messages. Um, and so we've implemented this, this idea of a whiteboard. And for those of you that have used some of our old offerings, um, Compass, uh, when we had, our, we had a, an aphasia page set in there, we used this whiteboard. So we've kind of gone with that, but we've updated it a little bit. Um, and so the whiteboard provides um, strategies that will support speech and overall communication success. Um, it's basically a digital version of a pen and paper. So um, we know that we kind of just do experience and, and kind of asking professionals and, and those that work with people with aphasia. We know that we often get pens and paper out, we write stuff and we draw things to help support that communication. So. We've kind of made a digital version of that that will hopefully make it the accessibility a little bit easier. 
Um, this whiteboard's always available on your toolbar when you're in this page set. Um, it can be used for maybe adding information. So it might be that you want to supplement the user's speech. Um, you can use different colours with the pens to emphasise questions, or you can add photos. And also what's quite nice about them is that you can save the white, whiteboards that you've created. So if you've used a whiteboard and it was really useful um, with that client for a certain situation, um, you can actually save that so that if you come into that situation again, you can go back and use that exact same whiteboard and you can add to it or you can change it. So really, really useful feature um, that is, is, is particularly relevant um, for this client group. Uh, yeah, just seeing there, Deborah's put as a good feature. Yeah, we, we, we think it's a, a really useful addition to Snap Core First. Um, so yeah, we, we like this. Um, next is looking at a uh, topic. So again, for those of you that are familiar with, we, uh, with Core First, it's a similar setting where what we're doing is again, we're using um, kind of those chunks of language a formulaic language that helps us engage. But what we're doing within topics is we're making it a kind of context specific. So I think the examples I've got up here are both um, around feelings. Um, and so this is where there's a slight difference um, to what you may be used to in the regular core first, is that we actually give you two options for how you want to display your topics. You can either have it in a grid like the top picture, um, which is uh, exactly what we do in Snap Core First. So you've got uh, a grid of different uh, buttons of vocabulary that support the, the, the symbols um, and the written message. Um, or you can use um, a visual scenes, which is um, the kind of the, the, the other example. So visual scenes is a picture or a photo that represents a topic um, or it might kind of provide context to a topic. Um, and we know that there's increasing evidence to say that visual scenes increase um, successful communication and interactions with people with aphasia. So we know that this use of photos and, and pictures to kind of support an overall topic and really, really helps with those um, with aphasia. Um, we've provided examples um, within uh, the page set. But what we really encourage is using personal photos um, as these provide kind of more context and can um, uh, stimulate spoken language for the person and um, with aphasia. So I'll show you a little bit of an example of how I might do that when we get to the demo. Um, obviously, all of these topics can be edited, so you can change and, and change pictures, you can change the messages that are in there. Um, and there's a couple of kind of ways that you can use these um, topics, is that you can either use them to support interaction um, as, as, as usual, so they use this page set to engage, or it might be that I want to use this to kind of an, um, initiate a uh, conversation with, with the person um, with aphasia and to, to kind of support that modeling aspect. So it really kind of works well um, for, for those kind of scenarios. Um, next is, is rating scales. Um, oh, actually, sorry, I've just uh, missed a bit in the topics. You'll notice um, in these topics, in the, the top right hand corner, there's a little button for scripts. Um, these can, each of these can be found in each topic. So we've put a little script in um, under each topic that we've created. Um, and what these scripts do is they provide opportunities to practice speech um, in routine and familiar situations. So um, we find that these can be um, used in, in a couple of different ways. Um, they can either be used to practice speech before an interaction. So if we know that we're going into a shop, we need to ask certain questions. It might be that um, that person with aphasia would like to practice that before they go. And so we can use the script that will provide prompts and help them to engage with that. Or it might be that we want to actually use that um, script uh, during the interaction. So we actually might want to press those buttons as we're engaging. Um, uh, in, in these certain situations. So a really, really useful tool as well. So rating scales, so we know that rating scales are quick and efficient and then could be used um, in a kind of traditional sense um, that is normally, uh, you know, things like, uh, do you like this? Is something hurting? How bad is, is your pain? And we know that rating scales have been used kind of traditionally a lot for that. But what we might also want to do is use them for things like giving an opinion so we've just seen a film together and we want to talk about, you know, how we rated that film, how we felt about it. Um, we can use rating scales to do that. Um, 
Written skills are meant to be combined with other forms of communication, including speech. Um, they're accessed on that toolbar. We've actually put them in four, there's four different options available for um, uh, the waiting skills, and I'll take you through them. But we want to kind of consider size and colour and complexity when we're using them. Um, these waiting scales can be customised, so we can change them according to maybe wanting to use some pictures in there or whatever might be useful. And we can use rating scales in modelling as well. So lots and lots of ways in which can, we can use rating scales. And again, this is another feature that, that has been used quite heavily over the years with, with our clients with aphasia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you in to snap call first and show you. Do we have any questions so far? Does anybody have anything they want to ask or say? I'm not seeing anything in the chat window so far. Okay, perfect. All right, so, um, okay, so as you can see, I've, I've opened this up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, show you how to access the, the page set to begin with. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of ways of doing it, um, but um, I'm going to show you as if you've just downloaded the app to begin with. So I'm just going to come, if you ignore this section for now. So say you've just downloaded Snap Call First for the first time. Um, just seen a question from Deborah, Deborah. Are the scripts on all of the topic pages? Yes, they are, Deborah. Yeah, and I'll show you that. So there's a script for each topic that we've um, created. And then, of course, we encourage you to create your own if you create a new topic as well. So if you've downloaded the app for the first time, you're going to get this uh, Getting Started uh, tool. Um, so I'm going to click on getting started and then the first thing that it's going to ask me to do is to select my page set. So the default will always be the call first, but if I um, just come to this button where it says show more, I'm just going to um, scroll down to where it says aphasia page set. So just to know, um, for those of you that are outside the United States, um, we do currently only have it localised to US English, but we are um, in the process of, of um, localising that. So you may find that you'll have to make some changes to vocabulary that you see, um, but we're, we are working on localization for that. So you select that page set, um, and then at this point, um, there's a couple of things that you can do, but if you've signed up for a free trial, um, or you've already got an existing trial, you want to, to log into my Toby Dynavox here, and this is going to ensure that you have uh, full access to the page set. Um, sorry, I can't seem to type in. Uh, sorry, Alice, I don't know if you can tell, but um, I wonder if it's just for me, but you uh, just dipped. Sorry, Alice, sorry. you just dipped out there for a sec. Okay, have you got me back? Yeah, yeah, I've got you back now. Perfect, okay. Uh, just seeing a question from Lisa. Yeah, I'm just gonna show you those voices. That's a great question. And that's gonna be part of this setup feature. So um, you'll see that in a second. So I'm gonna log in um, to my account here. Um, just log in there. And then it's gonna um, give me a couple of uh, features for uh, setting up. So, so here it's gonna ask me to select that voice. Um, so you'll see here there's a couple of filters and um, so if I've obviously been working with a lady I'm going to filter down to female voices uh, because I've gone for a, a US English page set it's going to give me the US voices first but if I scroll down you'll see that we've got our UK English voices here as well so I'm going to go for Lucy um, but you'll see that we've got quite a wide, wide selection and then I'm going to hit the next arrow and then at this point I can choose my grid size so um, we give you three different choices um, in the aphasia pay set, a three by three, a four by three, and a six by five. Um, I'm going to go for the six by five, click done, and then there we go. I've created um, that page set. Um, if you've already got Snap Call First and you're using the Call First page set, um, you and you want to add um, or change to the aphasia page set, um, you're going to do this um, by coming up to the edit button. So in your existing user, you're going to come up to the edit button and you can either go to page set, click where you say page set, and create a new page set. Um, 
So if I click on create new page set there, it's now going to give me the options and I can go to a phase your page set. Click next, give that a title, create, and then you'll see that will be under there. So for example, if I've got call first and then I want to add a phase onto there, um, or if you'd like to create a new user, so you might want to have a completely different user, you're going to go to user, new user, and then it's going to take you through that wizard that I've just showed you. Okay, so either add it as a new, new page set under page set, create new page set, or create a new user by going to user, and a new user. Okay. So then once you've got that, um, this will open up. So as I mentioned before, you've got um, usual kind of layout in Snap. Of course, up here at the top, you've got um, the top bar. So it's got access to things like the dashboard. This is your search tool where it'll help you find um, uh, vocabulary. So if I type in places, so it's now going to show me how to find that, which is really good for modeling. Um, as well. You'll notice at the middle of this top bar, it'll actually tell you what page, <clears throat> excuse me, what page you're on. Um, and then we have access to uh, the light bulb. So um, this will just tell you um, if there are new features uh, within Snap. So we do quite regular updates um, and that will automatically happen through your app store. Um, so what we do is when we've given you an update, um, we'll give you some um, kind of uh, details of that update in this light bulb section. This syncing cloud allows you to, to back up your page set to, to the cloud and then your edit button up here allows you to make changes. And um, I'll go through a little bit of that in, in, in a while. So as usual, this toolbar is gonna stay no matter what page you're on. So it really allows for, for, for great navigation. Um, your word lists, um, as I mentioned before, is going to be all that fringe vocabulary that helps us communicate. Um, and we've really looked at the kind of frequency and need of, of, of what this client group needs. And as I mentioned, it's often kind of places and people um, that are quite important for this client group. So you can see here we've got lists and we've got some different uh, categories up here. And it might be that I want to, um, to add a list onto here. So I'm going to very quickly show you how to do that. Um, but we do have some other tutorials um, on our YouTube channel that talk a little bit more about editing. But let's say I wanted to add um, a family page into there. So I'm going to come up to my edit button. I'm going to click on where it says add list because that's where I want to put it. I'm going to come to this little tool down here. And I'm going to go change that to my family. I'm going to click on where this symbol is and we're going to choose a symbol i'm just going to take the my bit away and then now it's going to give me some family symbols so i can come here and as you can see there's lots and lots of different ones um, that i can choose from um, i'm gonna to come to this one and select that as my symbol so now i've created that i want to fill in that list so i'm going to double click on this button so that i can open up that menu um, and I can start putting um, people in there. So first person I want to put in is Jack. Uh, Jack's my nephew. Um, so I can either come to symbols and I can maybe just choose boy and choose a symbol here. But the other thing that I might want to do is actually use a photo of Jack. Um, so if I click on this little camera here um, and I can either take a photo directly from the device that I'm using, or if I go to photo library, I can pull something um, from um, my computer already, or my device already. So let's go here, choose that photo of Jack. And now I've got Jack on there. Same if I wanted to do another one, I fill in the details there. Again, I'm gonna use a photo, come into the photo library, pick the one I want, and I've used photos. So a really lovely and easy way of adding some personalization um, to those lists. So as mentioned, quick fires, this is where we're going to have those chunks of language. And so one thing <clears throat> um, that I wanted to point out is we talked about how each of these folders has a different color assigned to it. 
so that they know what page they're on. So greetings is this purple one. Personal needs is this kind of yellowy colour. Aphasia, so remember this is that really nice page that, uh, that will help um, our clients maybe advocate for themselves so they can say things like I have aphasia and you slow down. And so as you notice, to go on to each of these different tools, it's got a different colour. So that helps us to, to navigate a little bit around that as well. Um, so whiteboard, um, so as I said, a uh, really, really useful tool to do things like add an image. So I can either take a photo, so if I'm out and about and want to take a photo straight away, or again, I could pick a photo um, from here. And it's going to insert that in there. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I can move it around, put it wherever I want, and then I can add to it. So I'm going to write on here. It's a bit tricky with the mouse. It's a bit easy when you're just using your finger. So this is Pete. And this is Jack. And again, I might want to use different colours. I might want to circle. Um, anything that, that we think that, that that might support that communication. And we could do things like um, erase bits, we can clear it, we can edit the image, we want to move it or, or make it bigger. And then, as I said, I could actually keep that and save it. So if we find that we're, we're needing to support quite a lot with the names of these two little ones, what I might want to do is keep that and then I could just add a new whiteboard if I'm doing a different topic. So really, really lovely uh, tool that's quite easy to use. Um, and then we come to um, these topics. So as I mentioned, we've got the grids uh, that will basically just use uh, symbols and and text as usual. And this is where we're going to find these scripts. So this is a script for feelings. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that sound. Can you can? No, you can. No. All right, let me just quickly adjust that. I don't know why. Because it didn't click on there. There you go. All right, so. I feel pretty good lately. Can you hear that? Yeah, that's great. Brilliant. So as I mentioned, these scripts might be used either to kind of practice before we're going out into the community, or it might be that we're, we're, we're using it to support that, that communication. So that's topics and grids, or we can go for these visual scenes. So as we mentioned, we've put examples in each of these, but what we would recommend is that you use personal photos for that person because it's going to make it um, kind of better for them to, easier for them to make uh, connections. So again, I can quickly show you how to do that. So again, I'm gonna come up to this edit button and I'm gonna say, right, I wanna change this family uh, photo. So I'm gonna click on that photo there um, and then I'm gonna come down here to where that camera is. Again, I'm gonna choose from photo library and then I'm gonna choose a photo and put that in. So now this is my family, I can relate to this. Um, and then what I can do around here is, um, you know, put in. Tell me you know, about your family. Some different phrases. Some I comments. have grandchildren. My spouse's name is a name. So we can come in and we can make edits to these buttons. Um, we can add some of our own buttons. So this one, for example, my family lives in. England. So England, click done. My family lives in England. So I've got a really, really lovely um, kind of way of, of, of helping, supporting, and talking about these kind of things. Uh, just seen uh, a link from a uh, question from Oliver. Yes, we do have some resources, and I will show you those in a second. Um, We've got some really good stuff, actually, and um, hopefully will, will help you. Um, so lastly, we've got these rating scales. We've talked about the importance of these. So as I said, we've put them um, in. Uh, we've got four different types. So we've got this kind of short three step one with some nice visual representations. We've got the same, but with five buttons. 
Um, and then we've got this kind of color coded version. And then another bigger version. And again, you can actually come in and edit these. Um, so if you wanted to put different symbols in there, if you wanted to change from numbers to something else, um, so you can actually kind of edit those and use them um, as uh, as appropriate for you. So um, as Oliver kind of reminded me, um, we've got um, a really great uh, landing page on, uh, well, a page on our website that's full of resources that support this client group. Um, Again, I, I will send you a link, but I'm just going to quickly show you how to find that. So if you go to our website, Toby Dynavox, and go to where it says learn, and if we go to user conditions, um, there is a page for aphasia stroke. And in here, um, we've got some really lovely tools um, that can be used. So we've got um, a lovely interest inventory. Um, we've got some really nice training cards. So I think this is probably what you're thinking of or hoping for, Oliver. Um, so in here, we've just got some really nice training cards that talk a little bit about the condition, about the, some of the strategies that we use, talks about communication partner strategies um, and how we use them. And then it goes into the different tools that we've just talked about, um, looks at kind of topics and how, how you choose between the others, the different um, styles gives you a little bit of help around editing and customizing and then it gives you actually some nice um kind of uh activities to do um so activity around visiting the doctor how you can help prepare for that the tools that you can use activities around going to a restaurant so some really really lovely resources there and um, so i will as i say i'll send you the direct link but it can be found here um, it gives you a little bit more information on each of um, the, the topics, the tools, sorry, that I used. Um, and then it also talks about using things like photo albums and calendars. Um, and again, it will give you some lovely uh, resources there. Um, and then there's this nice uh, communication activity and therapy guide. Um, again, um, that gives some really, really good um, uh, resources. Uh, for professionals, but also uh, for carers as well. So um, I'll link you into that page. Um, but as I say, we've got some really, really good stuff in there. Um, we're really trying to focus quite a lot on supporting those with aphasia. We know that um, it's a really kind of huge client group that um, we know needs a lot of support um, and the isn't always as much specific support for this client group. So we're actually putting quite a lot of um, efforts at the moment um, into, into supporting this. Um, and you'll hopefully see over the next few months that we'll have quite a concerted effort towards focusing more specifically on aphasia. Um, and you'll see a couple of tools and things that we're developing at the moment. So we're really hoping that um, we'll have plenty to, to, to help support you guys with this client group. Um, and as I said, if you've got any questions, if you'd like um, to have more of a conversation with us about this, a little bit more in depth into some of the resources, please get in touch. Um, oh, Oliver, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you'll find these useful. Um, yeah, we, 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 we've, I think we've, we've done a really good job of, of creating some nice user-friendly resources for everybody. Um, I've run over three minutes, so I'm gonna call it a day. I'm happy to hang around. So if anybody does have any more questions, please feel free to either put them in the chat or um, unmute your microphone. Um, otherwise, um, let me just jump in. Um, otherwise, um, I'll let you go um, and hopefully see you again soon. Um, there are some, as I said, we've got um, a bunch of other uh, sessions coming up around Snapcore first, but we've also got um, a bunch of other uh, training sessions coming up. So I'll send you some links, but you can also just go onto the support and training section on our website. If you click on live training, you'll be able to find lots of different sessions that we're doing, um, either run by ourselves or by uh, a team, the, the US team as well. So um, hopefully um, you guys will find that useful and uh, speak to you soon.
just stop the recording before I forget.